Hi, I am Dr. Lavincia Shaver, and I'm here today from Kingdom Faith Global Church, amen, where I am Apostle Dr. Lavincia Shaver. My husband is Pastor Shaver. We're so excited to have you to fellowship with us this morning. Uh, this praise the Lord. We give God all the glory, all the praise. Again, we're Kingdom Faith Global Church here in Biloxi, Mississippi, where Pastor Elam Shaver is the pastor. We're right here on the coast, and we're excited to bring the word of the Lord to you today. And what he is saying today, I believe that there is a word for for you. I labor for this word, so I pray that it falls on good ground and that you all can receive it today. Just receive it by faith. We have been excited here at Kingdom Faith Global Church because we are a church that is based on the word of God, based on faith, living by faith and believing God to see the miraculous in our lives. Before I get started, I want to just say that we don't own the rights to this music. Amen. So I want to just start off by saying that, but I'm excited about today's message because I've been hearing a song all in my, my spirit. My husband and I have been hearing songs about faith and we've been in a time of worship here at Kingdom Faith Global Church on Wednesday nights. We've been given the mandate to just worship and stay in the presence of God and just minister unto him. And we have seen miraculous things happen. On last week, we had a person Person whose knee uh, was healed. Uh, we've had people that have been healed and we've had people that we believe that God is pouring into. God has said that I'm, I'm opening up a well, those wells that have been stopped up, that I am unclogging them and I'm leading you to water, amen, in a thirsty place. And so we give God all the praise and all the glory I'm not going to be with you here long today. I just want to give you the word that the Lord has given to me. And I pray that it's an encouragement to you. I pray that this word encourages you. It motivates you to keep on going and doing what God has given you to do. Listen, God is about your purpose. God is about your destiny. God is about, is about you succeeding in everything that he has called you to do. Let's just go into a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father God, we just thank you right now for all that you're doing, Father. We thank you right now for the pouring out that you are pouring upon your people right now, Father. We thank you, Father God, that those that have been sowing, Father God, that this is a time of harvest. This is a time for the miracles. This is a time for the signs and the wonders. This is a time, Father God, that those that have stand, Father God, and that have not compromised, Father, in your word and in integrity, Father. Father God, that you're rewarding them for their labor in Jesus' name. I want to take time to thank some people for coming on. Please tag and share this message. It's an encouraging word from the Lord. I love it when the Lord gives me encouraging words. As a person that stands in the office of the prophet, sometimes I don't get the, the good words. It seems like sometimes I feel like that Micaiah prophet that comes before the people and warns them. And I sent out and put a post on Facebook actually this week about a warning. But there is also a word of encouragement for those of you that are walking in integrity, those of you that are faithful in covenants, those of you that are doing what God has told you to do and you are persevered through some some things and I know that we're in we're about to go into February and we're in 2022 but there are some of you the Lord is impressed upon me you're still stuck in 2021 and God by the decree and the name of Jesus Christ I decree that you're coming out of that thing today you will no longer look behind you in your past but you are going to walk into everything that God has for you in this season the first scripture that I want to read to you today, and, and, and I just want to read this scripture to you, is Isaiah 61 and 7. It says, instead of shame, you shall receive double honor. And instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double 
everlasting joy, double everlasting joy. I can't help but laugh when I read this scripture because just the idea of coming out of things and finally coming to a place where we can have joy. We know that our joy is not based on material things. It's not based on affirmation of, affirmation of men, but some of us went through some things, amen. Some of us have come through some stuff. Some of us have been in a wilderness place. I don't know about you, but last year was the most trying year for my husband and I when it comes to walking by faith, when it comes to believing God had not discarded us, when it comes to trying to just obey God and still not see the manifestation, but still walk in faith. And God is saying, now is the time that those people that have walked in faith, those people that were faithful, those people that sowed when it didn't look like anything was coming up as a harvest, God is saying that now is the time for you to rejoice and have that everlasting joy. So I just want to read that scripture again to you. Isaiah 61 and 7 says, instead of shame, some of you went through some shame. Some of you went through some disappointments. You shall receive double honor. Some of you felt like, well, God, whatever I'm doing, nobody's recognizing it, but God saw it. And God said, you're going to receive double honor. And instead of confusion, in other words, God's taking you out of all of that chaos. He's taking you out of all of that mess. He's taking you out of all of the conflict, all of the strife. And God is saying he you're going to walk in a place and you're going to receive a double portion for everything that you went through all of the trials all of the hardships all of the confusion all of the shame all of you being discarded all of you feeling rejected god's getting ready to do that now it says therefore in their land that means wherever you are whatever place geographically how many of you know that god determines the boundaries of where men live remember in the tower of babel he said that nothing would be too hard for them if he didn't confound their language. So he confounded their language and he had them to spread out over the entire earth. But it's the Lord that determines the boundaries of where you live. That's your geographical area. So that means that if you've been coming against principalities, if you've been coming against spirits of religion, if you've been coming against spirits of witchcraft, if you've been coming against wicked in the land that has tried to suppress you, tried to cage you in, tried to stop you from reaching the mark, tried to stop you from expanding in your ministry, tried to stop you by belittling you, by shaming you. The Lord said that this is your season. I'm excited already and I haven't even gotten into all of the word that the Lord gave me, but the Lord is saying that this is your season to rejoice because the rain is coming. The Lord said he's unclogging your Wells. I want you to tag somebody. I want you to share this with somebody. Please tell them that I'm on today. And this is the word of the Lord for you, for those of you that have grown tired and well doing. Now, the thing that I want to surprise you with, and this may take you off guard right here. I remember a long time ago, my husband, Pastor Shaver, he preaches a couple of sermons. One of them is that God is faithful. I could just hear that sermon all over again. But the other one that I want to talk to you about is one thing that he said that stuck out in my mind today is why do bad things happen to good people. And one of the things that I have to remind myself sometimes is not that you're not doing everything that God wants you to do. It's not that you're not trying your best. It's not that you're not crying out to God. God, show me my heart. Bring me my heart. It's not that you're not trying, but sometimes in life, there are bad things that happen to good people. It's a part of life. I think that sometimes we attribute God's faithfulness to us not having any trials, to us not having any conflicts, to us not having any heartbreaks, but the faithfulness in, in God is, is that he's able, that's the song that I'm playing right now, he's able, he is able to do whatever you need him to do exceedingly and abundantly more than you could ask or imagine, God is able to pull you out of that pit, remember Joseph? 
Joseph's own brother, so threw him in the pit, discarded him only because he dared to tell them what God had promised him. And he they threw him in a pit. But now the thing that they, I researched this scripture, the pit, it says that they threw him in a pit without water. They threw him in a pit without water. So immediately that told me that it was really a whale. One translation says they threw him in a sister. So that means it was a dry place. It was a place where he had to be thirsty for a while. It was a place where there was no water available for him. And some of you have been in a pit. Some of you have been in a cistern. And some of you feel like the people that you love threw you in that pit. Some of you feel like that you that you had people to walk away from you. Some of you feel like that you had ministries that didn't work. Some of you feel like that you got separated from loved ones. And God is saying that I am about to pull you out of that and give you water in in a thirsty land. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Now, when I went to Isaiah 61 and 7, the one from the Message Bible says this, get this, because you got a double dose of trouble. <laughs> and some of you, if you're like me, when I read this scripture, I was like, well, Lord, it almost seemed like more than a double dose, okay? But this scripture in the Message Bible is Isaiah 61 and 7. It says, because you got a double dose of trouble and more than your share of contempt, more than your share of contempt, your inheritance in the land there it is, that place in the land. Your inheritance in the land will be doubled and your joy go on forever. And your joy go on forever. What am I saying? Those of you that have been in a place where you had trouble and confusion in your geographical areas, God is getting ready to lift that. Remember when Solomon, God had all of his enemies to be at peace with him. The Lord is saying that I'm taking you into a place of peace. I'm taking you into a place where I'm getting ready to restore to you the double. Now let's talk about that double. Let's talk about this. Now, of course, the scripture was written when the children of Israel were taken captive in Babylon. It's in Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet. And it's written when they were taken captive to Babylon. Now, the interesting thing about this is when they were taken captive, the Lord himself allowed them to be taken captive. Does this not blow our mind? But we know that the reason the Lord allowed them to be taken captive was because of some things that they had done. They had been into idolatry. God had spoken to them over and over about turning away from serving idol gods, about not mixing, about not doing things. And the thing I love about this scripture is the redeeming power of God. What am I saying? Remember earlier I said that bad things happen to good people. Well, if we're really honest with ourselves, we're not good all the time. The Bible says that our righteousness is as filthy rags. What do I mean? Sometimes we mess up. Sometimes we're in a situation because we messed up, because we did something. Now, we are, God is faithful to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. But sometimes we go through a season of hardship because there were some things we didn't do. There were some things that we did right, but we could have handled it differently. Are you understanding what I'm saying? There were some things that we needed to take ownership of with ourselves. I never will forget, and I don't want to go on a rabbit trail, that's what preachers call it, but I never will forget when I was in my room and the Lord said, how long will you mourn over Saul? And I began to wrestle with that thing because I didn't know I was in mourning. But the Lord said, you're not wrestling with me. You're wrestling with self. You're wrestling with self. And sometimes we have to get before God and we have to wrestle with self. What am I saying by that? We have to begin to deal with those things in our heart, in our soul that would cause us 
to be in situations where we are. But I'm here to tell you that after you wrestle with self, after you go before God and you deal with the things that are in your own heart, after you stop trying to shift the blame to other people, after you begin to take responsibility of your own actions, the Lord is willing and he's ready and he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than you could ever ask or imagine. Some of you are waiting on some people to take responsibility for what they did to you in 2021. And God is saying that what I have for you in 2022 is so big. I'm getting ready to blow your mind. I'm getting ready to open up the heavens over you. I'm getting ready to stream in money like I never have before. I'm getting ready to heal your body. I'm getting ready to take you into your promised land. I just need you to let go of what's behind you and begin to praise me for what I'm getting ready to do in your life because there is an overflow coming to you like never before. You thought you were tolerated in your last season. God is getting ready to give you a celebration. He's getting ready to throw you a party. Those of you that have been faithful in the gospel of Jesus Christ and you never felt like you were honored, God is getting ready to touch the hearts of men and he's getting ready to turn some things around for you remember what I said the Bible says that uh, God told Saul how long will I mourn over Saul I'm here to tell you stop mourning over what happened last year God is saying I'm getting ready to restore to you the double fold now I said that good things can happen. Good things can happen to bad people and bad things can happen to good people. The thing with us in the body of Christ, God is yet faithful. God is faithful no matter what happens to you, no matter what's done to you. Understand this, your season, your season of mourning will not last always. There is joy coming in the morning and I'm telling you, you're on the break through of your morning. I just want you to believe God. I just want you to begin to praise him. I dare you begin to praise God for what he's getting ready to do and leave the things behind you that hindered you in your past. Everybody has setbacks in life. Everybody has the wrong things to happen to them. Everybody gets hurt sometimes, but God does not want you to stay in that pit. God does not want you to stay in that dry place. God is trying to pull you out. God is trying to give you fresh water. God is trying to rain on you. God is trying to show you there's a cloud coming and it looks like the abundance of rain is coming in your house. God just wants you to believe him. He just wants you to believe him. Maybe you've been sowing and you haven't seen it. There's a harvest coming for you. The Bible says, be not weary in well doing for in due time, you're going to reap that harvest. And I see a crop coming. I see a crop coming in your backyard. God is getting ready to restore. He's getting ready to restore the things that the canker worm and the palmer worm have eaten. A couple of times where God gave people the double because of their confusion. Remember Hannah, she was in, in 1 Samuel 1 and 5. Hannah could not bear children, but her husband fell for her because she was barren and he gave her the double portion. Listen, let me tell you about a testimony. A testimony. I have never seen this. Have you ever had times in your life where one thing seemed like that it was completely wrong, but the God was blessing on the other end of that thing? God is saying that for whatever trouble, whatever loss that you had, I'm getting ready to replace. Hallelujah. I remember even in my prayer time when the Lord said, get before my face. He said, let go, let go of Saul. He said, and pick up your horn and anoint another. God is giving you that other. Come on. And God's other is better than anything that you feel like you have lost. Those of you, you know what I'm talking about. You may have 
lost homes. You may have lost a job and God is saying that I can give you a better job. You may have had a spouse that cheated or walked out on you. God is saying I can give you a better spouse, somebody that's faithful, somebody whose heart is towards me. You may have lost a ministry. God said that's not the ministry I had, but I'm giving you better and I'm shifting your ministry to another direction. I just need you to receive the new I'm prophesying. I'm doing prophetic preaching right now. God is saying, let go of the old way that you did ministry. You thought you lost it, but God said, no, I discarded it because I knew if I let you hang on to it, you wouldn't go into the better for what I have for you. And God is saying, I'm able to do exceedingly and abundantly more to give you the double. In Galatians 6 and 9, it says, And let not those grow weary in well-doing, for in due season you will reap a harvest. I'm telling you, it's your harvest time. If you struggled and you sold, but you, you sold in your struggle, you sold in your struggle, God is saying, it's your harvest time. Get ready. I just see people being celebrated. I see people years, years and years and years that have been in a dry place and God is getting ready to do some things that you never had happen to you before. God is getting ready to celebrate you in places uh, that you didn't expect to be celebrated in because he's a restorative God and he is able. Ephesians 6 and 8 says, knowing this, uh, that whatsoever good, whatever good Good anyone does, he will receive back from the Lord, whether he is a slave or free. What am I saying? Whatever you did good in your last season, whatever you overlooked, this is powerful right here. Sometimes to get what God has for you, you have to overlook some stuff. You can't just get upset about everything. Even if it's an injustice, you have to be willing to say, oh, well, God, I get, I, 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 I forgive. I, I, I won't keep looking over my back. And you have to keep going. You cannot stay in mourning for the rest of your life. You got to come out of these grave clothes. You got to come out of the cave and you got to keep on moving and believe that God is faithful to allow you to see the promises of everything that he's promised to you. Hebrews 6 and 10 says, but God is not unjust. I love this. God is not unjust to overlook your work. When I wrote this scripture right here, I knew that God was talking to some leaders out there. I knew that God was talking to some men and women of God who feel like they've been overlooked. You may have the, you may have three members. You may have 10 members. You may be just faithful to go to the shelter and pray for people. But God is saying that even though you're not on a large platform, you're not overlooked. You are not overlooked. God is saying, I see you. He is the God that sees. I see you is what God is saying. Hebrews 6 and 10, I'm going to read it again. For God is not unjust. He's not like men. Sometimes men can be unjust so as to overlook your work and the love that you have shown for his name in serving the saints as you still do. Those of you, my brothers and my sisters that are preaching the gospel, those of you that are just ministers of reconciliation, you've gone and you've got people saved. You've gone to department stores. You prophesied to people. You laid hands on people at concerts. You went and you got on planes and you went where God told you to go. You didn't have a microphone, but I'm here to tell you that God saw you and he's not unjust to overlook everything that you've done. Guess what? Your blessings are getting ready to flood the gates of your home. Your blessings are getting ready to flood the gates of your children. Your blessings are getting ready to flood the gates of your ministry. Your gates are getting on your jobs, promotions. I'm telling you, there is an overflow coming. Just don't give up. He's able. Don't give up on God. He's able. We have been preaching about faith. We have been talking about faith. 
But what about the faithfulness of God? Even when you're not faithful, the Lord says God is faithful to perform his promises. Be encouraged today. God is faithful and he's able. I just want to give you some scriptures about God being able. Is that okay? I want to give you some scriptures about God being able. Romans 14 and 4 says he is able to make you stand. He's able to make you stand. That's Romans 14 and 4. You, and then it says, who are you to judge another man's servant? To his own master, he stands or fall. Indeed, he, meaning God, will be, the God will make you stand. It says, indeed, he will be, a, be made to stand. In other words, God is going to make you stand. Listen, sometimes there are judgments that are passed. The Bible talks about how judge not lest you be judged. But I love this scripture right here because it reminds us that sometimes in the body of Christ, even amongst the clergy, we can be hard on each other. But this scripture right here admonishes us to be careful about how we put our mouths on each other. Amen. Uh, I, I had a mentor and a pastor. He used to say the very finger that you're pointing at somebody else else that thumb is pointing back at you and so it's very important in this area that if you've made judgments against other people if you put mouth your mouth on other people that you repent and let God deal with folk and you move on and let God deal with you amen look at that thumb and say I'm gonna let God deal with me but he said he is able to make you stand who are you to judge another servant to his own master? He stands or fall. Indeed, he will be made to stand. And the last part of that says, for God is able. Now, some of you, you felt like you were judged. You felt like there were some things that, that were said about you that weren't true. But God is saying, I will make you to stand even in the midst of this because I'm able. I'm able. I'm talking about the ways that God is able. Just trying to increase your faith here because we've been talking about faith at Kingdom Faith. Okay, Kingdom Faith. We've been talking about faith. Okay. And so I want you to have faith in God. The second way is he's able to establish you. Romans 16 and 25 says, now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ. He's able to establish you. That means to make you rooted, to make you strong. God is able to do it. Do you believe God is able? You have to believe that God is able to do what he has promised you to do. All right, number three, Jude 24 is our next scripture. He's able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his glory. He's able to keep you from falling. Those of you, you just need to believe that God is not going to let you fall. If you're one of the people that's given, given their life and you have seen God, uh, uh, you, you, you know that you got in a place where maybe you got off. God says, I'm able to keep you from falling. Just trust in me, baby. Just hold on. I can turn this thing around for you. God is saying, I'm able to keep you from falling. So God is able. Number four, he's able to make all grace abound towards you. Second Corinthians nine and eight says that he's able to make all grace abound towards you. He's going to make grace so heavy on your life that you won't be, you won't carry the guilt. You won't carry the shame. And you'll understand that after you confess, after you get things right with God, that he's able to make the grace abound, even to when Withstand everything that you've gone through. Grace will help you withstand everything that you've gone through, but grace will also help you forget it. God is saying, forget it. I want you, listen, have you ever been to a party and there's a person there 
everybody else is having a good time, but it's almost like they bring a cloud around them and they damper the joy. You don't want to be that person because I'm telling you, there's a rejoicing going on in the kingdom. God is about to do some things for us in this year, in this season. Uh, I don't care what the news is saying. I know what's going on in the spirit realm and what God is saying to his people. Now I put a word of correction on Facebook, but I'm talking about the people that have stood, that have not compromised, that have stood upon integrity, that have been faithful to God, that have sold in adversity. God is saying, I'm bringing you out of that place. He says, I'm able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than you, you could ask, imagine, or Thing than you could ask, imagine, or think. Romans 14. Romans, no, I'm going to go to Acts 20 and 32. He said he's able to build you up. The Bible talks about building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Come on. That takes faith. When you don't feel like it, you got to pray in tongues, baby. You just got to get in the presence of God. You don't know what to pray. I don't care if snot is running in your mouth, tears are running down your eyes. You got to get in the face of God. Sometimes you may be so hurt. Sometimes you may be so discouraged. Sometimes there may be confusion around you. And the Bible says when you don't know what to pray the holy ghost will give us utterance and so you pray in the holy ghost and build yourself up i'm telling you if you pray in the holy ghost long enough you'll feel like an energized bunny in your spirit and the fire of god will hit your belly and you'll be able to release fire out of your mouth to consume everything in your environment that's coming around you i'm telling you there's power in praying in the holy ghost there's power in fasting and praying there's power in declarations and confession and this is all a part of your faith God is faithful as you release his word over your situation as you begin to trust him and understand that the Bible said he's able he's able don't give up on him God hasn't given up on you don't give up on him God hasn't given up on you and God is faithful to perform his promises to you I want to go back to Joseph. I want to go back to Joseph. The Bible says that his brothers threw him in a pit. And there was no water in there. We've been worshiping on Wednesday nights. And, and I declare and I told uh, uh, them that was there. I said, I feel rain. Rain just began to fall. And I'm telling you, as you begin to worship God, as you begin to praise God, as you begin to just let go, listen, stop waiting around for a rock to fall on people that offended you. Get over it and move on. God is saying, move on, let it go. I got too much. You won't even see the goodness that I have for you. He said that the goodness, the goodness is going to overtake you in this season. The goodness is going to overtake you in this season. Many of you, you're, you're in a place where you're questioning some things. And God said, don't question me. Just move in faith. Don't question me. Just believe. Just believe I'm getting ready to open up the windows for you. Let me give you a testimony. And this is really prophetic. And I'm not trying to give anybody any free from uh, commercial. I want to tell you something. My husband and I went through the heart, one of one of the hardest years in ministry last year. Some heartbreaks came, some disappointments came, but God is still faithful. I went to get some chicken, okay, for my husband. And I, I drove up to this place and I noticed that they had beyond chicken, okay? And I've been trying to be on this uh, plant-based plant -based diet. Some of you, hopefully you can tell I've lost a little weight in my face. I've been trying real hard, but, but I went and I got in the drive-through and it said beyond chicken. And so I said, I'm gonna try this beyond chicken. So I got there and I placed my order and they said, pull up. We're going to bring your order out. 
And I sat there and I was on the phone with one of my dear friends and I, and I was just talking. And then, you know, you're talking and, and, and time goes by. And I said, girl, I said, what's taking so long? I said, I've been talking to you for about 20 minutes at least. So I get out of the car and I go in and they begin to apologize to me and say that they gave my order to somebody else. While I'm in there, there's this other elder elderly lady and she's just really, really going off on them. And I said, well, can you compensate me some kind of way? And they said, oh, sure, we can compensate you. Uh, and then I didn't know that at that time, come on, follow me, the district managers were having a meeting in the lobby and they overheard me talking to the person behind the counter. All of a sudden, these district managers begin to get up and say, oh, ma'am, we're so sorry. I mean, it was just really over and beyond. We're so sorry for that happening. Is there anything we can do? Can we get you a drink? And, and, and I was just getting all of this attention that was not even merited because I, I didn't even, well, I won't say it was merited, but I wasn't trying to get this attention. I wasn't irate. I wasn't complaining. And they all got up and began to just talk to me about it. And the lady says to me, would you like something to drink? And I said, well, I, I, I already have some drinks in the car that were given to me. She said, no, let us give you a half gallon of tea. And I'm like, OK, well, they gave me a half gallon of tea. So they said, well, we're sorry your order was given. Is there anything else we can do? They were just going overboard. And so I went outside and I waited. I came back in five minutes later and they gave me my order but my order was wrong catch this because this is prophetic stay with me my order was wrong okay so once again the district managers got involved now the district managers represented god because god just showed it to me you know later on and i was like wow god but they got involved and because of their presence was there they decided they said well just keep what you got Keep what you have in your bag. And I know some of you are saying, well, they had to do that anyway. But I'm saying to you, God was talking through this. He said, just keep what you have in your bag. And they brought me out another box. So I opened the box and that one's wrong. Are y'all hearing me? I opened the box and that one's wrong. And I said, well, you know what? I said, this order is not right either. And, and, and the guy said, I kid you not. He said, keep that. And what were you supposed to have? Keep that and what were you supposed to have? And he brought me another box. Are y'all hearing me? He brought me another box. Then I look at this box and I say, okay, but this was supposed to be original right here. He said, oh no. He said, you know what? Keep that. <laughs> Are y'all hearing me? He said, keep that. And he brought me another box. And he said, can I give you some cookies or something? And I said, well, yeah, that would be nice to have some cookies. He brings out to me, I know there's got to be about 20 cookies. These little cookies in a packages. And they were so abundant in his hand. I was like, wow, that's a lot of cookies. But when I got back home and I told my husband, I said, you won't believe this because I had just told him and I said, they should have gave me like a bucket of chicken. But they gave me what constituted to be a bucket. And when I came home, I had four boxes. What am I saying? God was confirming that he's getting ready to reward you for the wrong, for the mishaps. He's getting ready to give you double. He's getting ready to do exceedingly and abundantly more than you could ask or think. And let me tell you something, the cookies represented the sweetness and the dessert. There's a sweetness coming to your life where there was bitterness. There's a sweetness coming to your life where there was hardship. There's a sweetness coming to your life where there was heartbreak. There's for every tear that you shed. In 2021, I'm telling you so strongly, the Lord is over 
opening up the heavens. He's opening up the floodgates. If you trust him and you know that he's able, hallelujah, you know that he's able. This is a rhema word for you. God is able and he's getting ready to do it. He's getting ready to give you the double. What did he say to Elisha? Elisha asked Elijah, he said, I want the double portion anointing. Elijah said, if you stay with me until the Lord takes me away, you'll get that double portion. God is saying, stay with him. Don't leave him. Believe him. Don't let go of your faith. He's getting ready to reward you with the double portion that you have been waiting for for most of your life. I'm telling you, God is getting ready to do some things for some of you that you have never had done. It's going to be your first. <laughs> I just heard that God is getting ready to do some first things in your life. It'll be your first time doing this. It'll be your first time owning a house. It'll be your first time owning a car. It'll be your first time owning your business. It'll be the first time God is getting ready to do a lot of firsts for you. Hallelujah. Now I've given you the word of the All right, can you see me now? Okay. It's, I don't the, the uh, background is up. There you are. Okay. All right, can you see me now? Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. I am sorry. I got cut off, but, but you are not cut off. Amen. But the Lord wanted you to know that word. Hopefully you are still with me. And uh, I just want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Listen, that word uh, was powerful that the Lord gave me today. And I want to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you right now, Father God, that you are restoring, Father. You are, Lord God, you're rewarding the double, Father, for everyone, Father God, that has received this word by faith, Father, in the name of Jesus. God, I just thank you right now, Father God. God is just saying your shame the contention. I want to end again with this uh, verse, Isaiah 61 and 7. It was really the theme verse. Uh, we also talked about God being able, but Isaiah 61 and 7 said, instead of shame, you shall receive double. Instead of shame, you shall receive double honor, double honor, double honor, double honor, okay? Instead of 
instead of shame, you shall receive double honor. And instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double everlasting joy. Joy is coming to you, shall be theirs. God says in this word that you will receive double for your trouble. You're getting ready to receive double for your trouble. So I praise God for you. Father, I just thank you for the people, Father God, that your word has gone forth on good ground, Father. I thank you that they have the faith to continue to believe you. Listen, I don't care if you got to look out the door, do a symbolic gesture of faith and open your door. Remember, Elijah sent the servant out to look for the cloud. He said, go back again. If you got to look out your door and say, God, I'm expecting it. God, I'm believing it. I'm believing that my house is about to flood over with blessings. Uh, I remember a time I opened my purse and I said, God, I need some money. And a woman at lunch unexpectedly didn't know anything. She just wrote me a thousand dollar check and just put it under the table. You've got to do do something in your faith to trust and believe God that God is getting ready to bring you into the double portion anointing, the double portion anointing. Now, I just I, I, I just thank you right now, Father, for the word that you have given for Lord God, for everything that you have said to the pure people, your people today. I want to invite you again. We are Kingdom Faith Global Church. We're here every Sunday at 1030 uh, during the Sunday live that on Wednesdays we are here at 311 Westview Cove. We're Westview here Drive. Westview Drive in Biloxi. Mississippi, my husband's over there. I love my husband. I give honor to him. But but we're here in West Westview Drive, and we're here every Wednesday, and we're just ministering unto the Lord through the months of Mardi Gras. Amen. This is the word of the Lord that the Lord has given to us to release the glory into our region. And we want to invite you to that. Amen. We also want to let you know that uh, we have people online that, that ask us to come. We are apostolic ministry. We cover people out of we, in other cities. We couple, cover other ministries in other cities. If you're interested in that, you can get in touch with us at kfaithglobal.org, kfaithglobal.org, kfaithglobal.org. Also, if you go on the website. Uh, we have Prophetic Hub training. Uh, we train prophets. We're doing that on Mondays at seven o'clock and you want to register for a prophetic training. We had a hub in Mississippi and I've trained prophets for years and mentored prophets four years. And so if you're interested in learning more about the prophetic, you can sign up for that at kfaithglobal.org. We have Deliverance Academy as well. Uh, we've had Deliverance Academy and we've kind of interchanged that with uh, the prophetic hub, but we've had people that have gotten certificates from our Deliverance Academy and have trained people and showed them how to cast out demons, showed them how to stand in their own deliverance, how to minister others. Uh, 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 spiritual warfare is a part of that training as well. If you're interested in that, you can go to kfaithglobal.org as well. Those of you that have been seeding into the ministry, we want to tell you our covenant people, people that just want to seed with us. Uh, uh, if you want to be in covenant with us and you want to just be a person that continues to sow in good ground, you can sow to paypal.me slash KFGC. And Rachel is going to put that on for you, but you can sow. There are many ways you can sow or you can sow into dollar sign Dr. L. Shaver. dollar sign Dr. L. Shaver. Now to receive the promises of God and the things that we have talked about, one of the things is you must be saved. And so if you're listening to me and you happen to come on the live and you're listening and you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, I want to welcome you to give your life to Jesus Christ. That's the most important. That's a miracle right there that you would give your life to Christ. If you repeat after me, Father, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I acknowledge that Jesus died for my sins rose on the third day for my justification. 
and I repent and I ask you, Jesus, to come into my life and to be my Lord and my Savior and to forgive me for all of my sins. Lord, today I give my life to you and I acknowledge that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life from this day forward. If that's you, send us a, send us a shout out. You can go on our website again and you can just let us know that you gave your life to Christ. And my husband uh, has, he loves these uh, the books. Uh, you want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, why tongues and things like that. We have some pamphlets like that, but reach out to us and let us know. If you're one of the people that you messed up, you know, I talked about wrestling with myself in the prayer room. There were some things I had to wrestle with myself. I didn't wrestle with God. I had to wrestle with me. The Bible talks about how Jacob, how he wrestled with an angel. But when he got up, his hip was broken and his name was changed and his character was changed because he spent that time where God began to allow him to see himself. If that's you, all you have to do is repent and say, Father, I repent of my sins. I repent of straying away from you. I repent of the things that I've done that grieved you. And I'm ready to be restored to your fellowship. Father, Just I, I just want to come back into the fellowship and be a part right now. So Jesus, I ask that you forgive me and cleanse me from those sins and accept me back into the fellowship. If that is you, please let us know as well. Again, you can reach out to us on our website. We're seeing miraculous healings here also at Kingdom Faith Global Church. We're seeing people get healed. We're, we got a picture the other week that just really, really encouraged us. But we flow in the gifts of healing here uh, many times. If you want training, it's good to be with leaders that flow in like giftings. Okay. The Bible says that anybody, any believer can lay hands on the sick and see them recover. And we have talked about faith for healing, but there are some people, if you're in ministry and you feel like God wants to use you in healing, we're strong uh, uh, by the grace of God, by the grace of God, not in anything of our own strength, but the Lord has graced our ministry and deliverance and healing and the prophetic. And so if that's you, uh, we want to teach you about character character, integrity, discipleship, as well as training ministers as well. So reach it, feel, feel free to reach out to us and be an e-member as well. Again, I love you with the Lord of the Lord, the love of the Lord. I pray that this word bless you today. We apologize for the technical difficulties that came up where we blacked out, but prayerfully you got the word. Uh, Rachel is probably going to uh, edit the, uh, the, the, the video for us. And so we want you to be able to share this. We'll put it back up. Uh, if we take it down to edit it, we'll put it back up for you. But in the meantime, begin to just encourage people with this word. I'm Dr. LaVincia Shaver here at Kingdom Faith Global Church, where the pastor is Elam Shaver Jr. We love you. God bless you. And we will see you right here next week. Thank you so much.